Hello, everyone. Today we are going to talk about BACB Professional and Ethical Compliance Code for Behavior Analysts. Ethics is extremely important in any educational or social service setting. In the field of ABA, ethics guides each decision made by a behavior analyst. Next, we're going to talk about Section One, Responsible Conduct of Behavior Analysts. As a behavior analyst. We should maintain the high standards of behavior of the profession. Yes, high standards, which include first, we should rely on scientific knowledge. Second, we should have boundaries of competence. Third, we should maintain competence through professional development. Fourth, we should behave with integrity. Fifth, we should keep professional and scientific relationships. Sixth, we should avoid multiple relationships and avoid conflict of interest. Last but not the least, we should avoid exploitative relationships. Behavior analysts rely on professionally derived knowledge based on science and behavior analysis when making judgments in providing human services or when engaging in academic efforts. Boundaries of competence. Behavior analysts should only teach within the boundaries of their competence, which means we could only teach what we have learned. When we touch new areas, such as using new techniques to treat new behaviors to new populations, we should teach only after the first appropriate training. Maintaining competence through professional development. How can we maintain our competence? There are several ways. By reading the appropriate literature, attending conferences and conventions, participating in workshops. Obtaining additional coursework and maintaining appropriate professional credentials. Integrity. We should be truthful and be honest. We should never put others in the situation being fraudulent, illegal. Or unethical. We should make professional and high-quality commitment. Never promise what you cannot. Always making legal and ethical choices. What can we do when having conflicts? The answer is legal first. If the action is illegal. The action is unethical, and then fairness. Our actions should be fair to all parties involved. Keep in mind, not everyone will be happy with the results, but we should be fair. Professional and scientific relationships. Here is the question. You are a BCBA. Your neighbor asks you to look at her child's IEP, as the team has recently changed service allocation, and the mom is 
concern that the new treatment model will not meet his needs. You'll feel odd about it, but want to be helpful, and you get a copy of the IEP. Is this ethical? This would be a violation of Code 1.05 because this is not a defined professional relationship. We should provide professional or scientific relationships by using easy understanding languages to clients. We should make sure we obtain the competence to serve diverse populations, such as differences of age, gender, race, culture, religion, languages, and so on. We should not engage in discriminations, no harassing, or demeaning. We should show respect to every single person. Don't bring your personal feelings into work. Your personal problems and conflicts may impact clients' effectiveness of receiving treatment. Multiple relationships and conflicts of interest. A multiple relationship exists when a behavior analyst is simultaneously in two relationships. For example, serving a child client while also being friends with the family. Okay. Here is a tricky question. Whether or not accepting gifts will lead to multiple relationships. Accepting a gift, sometimes we call it slippery slope, is the beginning of a friend's relationship where people do favors for one another, share gossip, and give each other support. The code insists on a no gift policy, which includes no sharing meals with the family, not attending birthday parties, and of course not accepting gifts or food of any value. However, there is one exception, a handmade card from a child client, because it has no street value. We should keep in mind the potentially harmful effects of multiple relationships and let clients be aware of it as well. Here is another situation. If a BCBA is the owner of a small ABA company and she is supervising her daughter who is working on her BCABA supervision hours. Is this ethical? The answer is no. This is a code violation. Exploitative relationships. Don't exploit your clients, students, or supervisors especially not engaging in sexual relationships because it will impact your judgment or become exploitative. What if a behavior analyst falls in love with his child client mother? There is a two-year rule. He can declare the professional relationship formally ended. And then, after that date, he has to wait for at least two years to date with that lady. We should not barter for services unless a written agreement is in place when it's supervisee or client's request. when it's common to area or context. 
or when it's fair and commensurate. Okay, guys, that's all information of BSA B Ethics Section 1. Thank you for watching. See you later.